Hello everyone. Hope you are all studying well. From last few days we are talking about a chapter that is volumetric analysis and we are covering most of the topics which are related to the volumetric analysis. So there are four types of titrations are mainly studied in this volumetric analysis that is neutralization titration, complexometric titration, redox titration and precipitation titration. In last few days we discuss acid based titration that is neutralization titration then indicators which are used in this acid based titration and different acid based titrations we have al already discussed. In last lecture we also discuss about a complexometric titration how complexometric titration can be used to determine the amount of element present in the compound and EDTA is the best complexing agent for determination of various types of midline. So now in this lecture we will be discuss a third type of titration that is called as a redox titration. What is redox titration? In this redox titration mainly when oxidizing agent and reducing agent are titrated with each other this is called redox titration. So before going to study about redox titration, we must know some common definitions or common concepts which are used in the redox titration. So what are these concepts or what are these type of definitions? One of the definition is called as a oxidation. So oxidation is nothing but it is the process in which there is loss of electron or suppose we will be discussing organic chemistry oxidation is the process where is addition of oxygen and removal of hydrogen but here we are only discussing about some inorganic compounds because in volumetric analysis we know that most of the compounds are water soluble and mainly the inorganic compounds are water soluble and therefore we are only focusing towards the analysis of inorganic salts or inorganic compounds. So oxidation is the process where there is a loss of electron and due to the loss of electron the element which is present in lower oxidation state will be converted to higher oxidation state. Suppose for example there is we can say copper plus 1 when there is loss of electron copper will be converted into copper plus 2 that means there is loss of electron and copper 1 which is present in lower oxidation state will be goes to higher oxidation state that is copper 2 plus right so this is called as a oxidation reduction it is opposite to the oxidation reduction is the process in which there is gain of electron Right? In oxidation there is loss of electron but in reduction there is gain of electron and due to that gain of electron the element or the compound which is present in its higher oxidation state will be converted to lower oxidation state. Same example suppose we are taking copper 2 plus is there when there is gain of electron that is copper 2 plus plus 1 electron it will be converted into copper plus 1 that is copper plus 1 is present in higher oxidation state by gaining one electron it convert into copper plus one that is lower oxidation state right so oxidation and reduction these are the completely opposite term oxidation is the process there is loss of electron while reduction is the process there is gain of electron so there are another two important term that is called as a oxidizing agent for oxidation for oxidation we require a oxidizing agent and for reduction we require reducing agent so what is oxidizing agent? Oxidizing agent is the substance which gains electron, which gains electron that means itself reduce and it force another substance to oxidize that is called as an oxidizing agent. That means the substance or element itself get reduced but another substance it force to oxidize that means oxidizing agent is the substance which gain electron while reducing agent is substance which loses electron that means reducing agent is the substance itself get oxidized 
and it forces another substance to reduce. That is called as a reducing agent. Right. So the titration where oxidizing agent and reduction reducing agents are involved, in which there is transfer of electron from one substance to another substance, that will be used to determine concentration of many substance, and these are called as a redox titration. Right. So that means the titration where oxidizing agent and reducing substance are titrated with each other and the electron will be transferred from one substance to another substance and this is used to determine the concentration of many substances right so oxidation and reduction reaction oxidation reduction reaction when takes place in the same flask or we can say simultaneously in the same reaction then these are called as a redox reaction and these reactions occur between a reducing agent and oxidizing agent so oxidation reduction reaction is called as a reduction oxidation reduction reaction is called as a redox reaction and it will be takes place between reducing agent and oxidizing agent suppose there is one substance ox1 plus red2 it will be converted into red1 plus ox2 so what is ox1 ox1 itself get reduced right that is called as a oxidizing agent ox1 is a oxidizing agent and itself get reduced would be convert into redus1 so that is ox1 is the oxidizing agent it convert into redu red1 and red2 is the reducing agent 2 which will be convert into ox1 right so this is a quite you can say complicated but this is very simple term that is ox1 is oxidizing agent 1 it will be convert into reducing agent 1 and reducing agent 2 is convert into oxidizing agent 2 so ox1 is the oxidizing agent and red 2 is the reducing agent that we already discussed when reduction oxidation reaction takes place in a solution and there is transfer of electron from one atom to another atom this is called as a redox reaction right so this is a we can say general reaction Suppose we will see an example, particular example. If we do a reaction between metallic zinc and copper sulphate solution, metallic zinc which having oxidation state 0 and copper sulphate solution where copper will be present into plus 2 oxidation state. So here the product metallic copper and zinc sulphate solution is formed. That is when the reaction between metallic zinc and copper sulphate solution takes place then copper will be converted into metallic copper and zinc will be converted into the zinc sulphate solution and copper ion must come in a very close contact with the zinc atom so that there is a transfer of electron will be takes place through the solution right so here we can see the reaction the ionic reaction can be shown as copper 2 plus plus zinc it converted into copper plus zinc 2 plus that means copper 2 plus is a copper sulphate solution where copper is present in plus 2 oxidation state and zinc is metallic zinc which having 0 oxidation state which will be converted into metallic copper plus zinc sulphate solution right so here copper 2 plus is oxidizing agent right copper 2 plus is oxidizing agent because it forces zinc to oxidize into zinc 2 plus and zinc is a reducing agent zinc is reducing agent it forces copper to reduce from copper 2 plus to copper right similarly copper is reducing agent suppose we see a backward reaction that means copper plus zinc 2 plus will be converted into zinc plus copper 2 plus right so that means copper is a reducing agent it reduces zinc 2 plus to zinc and zinc, zinc 2 plus is oxidizing agent it oxidizes copper to copper 2 plus that means in forward reaction copper 2 plus is oxidizing agent and zinc is reducing agent but in backward reaction copper is a reducing agent and zinc 2 plus is a oxidizing agent suppose we see a reaction single reaction copper 2 plus will gain 2 electron it converted into metallic copper and this is called as a reduction so reduction is the process where there is gain of electron and the metal which is present in higher oxidation state will be converted into lower oxidation state then another time that is zinc will be converted into zinc 2 plus plus 2 electron this is called oxidation reaction where oxidation reaction where there is a loss of electron 
zinc will be loses two electron and convert into zinc two plus here the metal which is present in lower oxidation state will be convert into higher oxidation state that is zinc will be zero oxidation state will be convert into zinc two plus oxidation state so here the oxidizing agent copper two plus gains electron while reducing agent zinc loses electron that is already discussed by virtue of their chemical nature atoms or ions of element differ in their ability to lose organic electron that means the different metal or different ions having different ability to gain electron or to lose the electron and if this tendency of this oxidizing agent to gain electron and reducing agent to loss electron can be measured in terms of quantity called as electrode potential electrode potential that means suppose we will be take the solution into the electrolytic cell there are two electrode that is cathode and anode and if we apply a electric potential across these two electrode then some potential will be major across this electrode due to the electrolysis process and this electro major potential is called as electrode potential and this electrode potential is depend on the tendency of oxidizing agent and reducing agent to lose or to gain the electron that is called as electrode potential right so so this is a general information about the redox reaction so what is important here important there are five definitions are important that is called as oxidation oxidation there is a, we can say a loss of electron reduction there is a gain of electron oxidizing agent it oxidizing agent it is a there is a gain of electron and reducing agent there is a loss of electron and redox reaction that is the oxidation reduction reaction takes place during the simultaneously that is called as a redox reaction so in volumetric analysis volumetric analysis we are doing a titration between oxidizing agent and reducing agent for that we require one standard substance it may be either a primary standard substance or secondary standard substance so some common compound can be used as a oxidizing agent or reducing agent that will be discussed here potassium permanganate as an oxidizing agent oxidizing agent oxidizing agent itself get reduce and it force another substance to oxidize that means there is a we can say a gain of electron potassium permanganate is kmn4 is a powerful oxidizing agent which is introduced into the titrometric analysis by ab margaret for the titration of fe2+ ion that means this potassium permanganate can be used for the titration of fe2+ ion it is a strong oxidizing agent and this can be introduced by f margaret in acidic solution the reduction can be represented by equation that means in acidic solution the potassium permanganate is oxidizing agent that means itself get reduced and the reduction reaction can be shown here that is kmno4 plus ath plus ion that is kmno4 plus acidic solution that is h2so4 it gains five electron and it will be convert into mno2 plus 4h2 that is the ionic reaction can be sh shown like this mno4 minus plus 8h plus plus it takes five electrons and it will be convert into mn2 plus kmno4 here manganese present in plus 7 oxidation state and it will be convert into plus 2 oxidation state that means it will be takes five electrons and it will be convert from plus 7 oxidation state to plus 2 oxidation state the standard redu reduction potential for kmno4 in acidic solution is 1.51 volt standard reduction potential that is e0 if we apply a nernst equation then in nernst equation we know that e of cell is equal to e0 minus 0.059 upon n into log of reduced form of an oxidation power. so here e0 is called as a standard potential standard oxidation potential or reduction potential and for kmno4 the standard reduction potential is 1.51 volt so it is a strong oxidizing agent the reaction mostly takes place in the presence of dilute sulfuric acid because it does not have any effect on kmno4 that means when we are doing titration we are generally adding a sulfuric acid in the solution because there is no effect of this kmno4 on this acid but instead of this sulfuric acid if we use hydrochloric acid then there is liberation of chlorine that means when kmno4 react with hydrochloric acid it will be liberate chlorine and therefore we are not using 
the hydrochloric acid for the titration because it will be liberate the chlorine. How it, it will liberate chlorine? Because the twice KMnO4 will be react with 10 HCl. It, it takes a 16 H plus electron. It will be convert into twice Mn2 plus plus 5 chlorine molecules are involved. Plus there is formation of 8H2. Right? So that means KMnO4 when react with HCl, it will be liberate the chlorine and it will be takes 5 electrons from the chlorine. Right? So this is the reaction where the HCl will be react with KMnO4 with liberation of chlorine molecule. Potassium per magnet may also be used as a strong alkaline solution. Though it is used in acidic solution, sometimes it can be also used in strong alkaline solution. And in alkaline solution, it can be used a two partial reactions. So what are these two partial reactions? The relatively rapid reaction, where the relative rapid reaction will be takes place when KMnO4 will be used MnO4 2 minus by taking one electron. So MnO4 minus plus one electron it gives MnO4 2 minus and relatively slow reaction that is MnO4 2 minus plus two electrons it will be converted to MnO4. That means in presence of strongly alkaline solution the reaction will be convert from KmO4 to MnO2 by two conjugative reaction. In first step MnO4 KmO4 convert into KmO4 minus and KmO4 minus will be converted into Mn2. That means two conjugative reactions. Here, if we see the standard reduction potential for the reaction first, that is where MnO4 minus is converted into Mn2, MnO4 2 minus is 0 0.56 volt, and for the reaction MnO4 2 minus converted into MnO2 is a 0 0.60 volts. So these are the standard reduction potential when the KMnO4 will be react in presence of strongly alkaline solution. So it is difficult to obtain KMnO4 in perfectly pure form and free from manganese dioxide. That means when we are taking the KMnO4, the KMnO4 is very difficult to take in a pure form because it will be associated with manganese dioxide and therefore per magnet is in inherently unstable in presence of Mn2 plus ion because it is unstable in the Mn2 plus ion and therefore it is difficult to take in a pure form. So how the reaction will be takes place? That is MnO4 will be react with Mn2 plus ion because here we say that per magnet is unstable in presence of Mn2 plus and it will be converted into MnO2 that is KMnO4 in presence of Mn2 plus convert into MnO2. This reaction is very slow. This reaction is very slow in acidic solution but rapid in neutral solution and hence the solution is rarely made dissolving weight KMnO4 in purified water. This reaction is very slow in acidic solution but rapid in neutral solution and therefore if we preparing the solution in water then KMnO4 will be convert into MnO2 very fastly and therefore instead of freshly prepared solution is heated to boiling on a steam bath for an hour and then filter through a non reducing filter paper because if the, there is conversion of KMnO4 into MnO2 that will be filtered through this non reducing filter paper. Then the next property of this potassium per magnet Potassium per magnet is not a primary standard substance because we are saying that potassium per magnet does not available in the pure form. It is mainly associated with Mn2 plus that is MnO2 and therefore if it is not present in pure form this cannot be used as a primary standard substance. So it can be used as a secondary standard substance and its exact concentration can be determined by titrating with standard sodium oxalate. For this titration, slightly colored or colorless solution, the use of an indicator is necessary, right? Because the KMnO4 sometimes act as a self indicator because it is present in red color and its dilute solution and its dilute solution will be available in faint pink color, right? And for the titration of slightly colored or colorless solution. The use of an indicator is not necessary 
because it act as a self indicator and very small amount of KMnO4 imparts a pale pink colored blue solution because dilute solution of KMnO4 will be gives a pale pink or faint pink color to the solution and therefore there is no need of addition of external indicator for the titration. Second type of indicator uh, sorry second type of oxidizing agent is a potassium dichromate. So like potassium permanganate potassium dichromate can be also used as an oxidizing agent but this potassium dichromate is not a such powerful oxidizing agent as a potassium permanganate. But this potassium dichromate having several advantages over this potassium permanganate. The potassium dichromate can be obtained in pure form and in stable form up to its fusion point and therefore it is an excellent primary standard substance. This potassium dichromate is available in highly pure form and, therefore, and it is also a stable compound and therefore it is an excellent or we can say a primary standard substance. Its exact normality can be prepared by dissolving a node known weight into the definite volume of solution. The standard solution of potassium dichromate can be prepared by dissolving weight amount of a pure dry salt in a known volume of water that is called as a primary standard substance and its aqueous solution are stable infinitely and the protected from evaporation. If we protect the evaporation of solvent it can be an excellent primary standard substance and its concentration will be stable for the long time except there is evaporation of the solvent. Potassium dichromate can be used in acidic solution and it is reduced rapidly at room temperature to a green chromium third salt. Here chromium is also present in plus 7 oxidation state and when it will be reduced in acidic solution it convert into a chromium 3 plus salt and which having a green color and it is not reduced by cold HCl below 2 molar concentration. That means the potassium dichromate can be used in an acidic solution but if you are using HCl as an acid then below 2 molar this potassium dichromate cannot be reduced. Potassium dichromate solution are less easily reduced by organic matter than are those of permanganate and are also stable toward the light because we are saying that potassium permanganate is a strong oxidizing agent and potassium dichromate is a not a as strong as potassium permanganate and therefore it is not easily reduced the organic matter or sometimes a less organic matter can be reduced right but it is stable toward the light and therefore we can use this as a primary standard substance in acid solution the reduction of potassium dichromate can be represented as potassium dichromate will be take 6 electron and it will be converted into chromium 3 plus salt right so chromium which is present in plus 7 oxidation state will be converted into plus 3 oxidation state. So this potassium dichromate is K2Cr2O7 will be take 6 electron and it will be converted into 2 chromium 3 plus that is chromium will be converted into that is chromium 3 plus this is the ionic reaction. When the reduction of this potassium dichromate will be takes place it will be converted into chromium 3 plus and this chromium 3 plus having a green color and this green color will be interfere during the detection of end point and therefore to determine the exact end point during the titration the external indicator must be added to locate the exact end point of the titration and generally n phenylanthranic acid and sodium diphenylamine sulfonate are commonly used as the indicator during the potassium dichromate titration. Right? So this is all about the potassium dichromate and potassium permanganate, right? So friends, what we discuss today, we discuss what is redox titration, we discuss oxidation process, reduction process, oxidizing agent, reducing agent and redox reaction and two substances that is used as a oxidizing agent for the titration that is potassium permanganate and potassium dichromate and their property and how it can be used as a oxidizing agent for the titration. So let us stop here. The remaining part will be discussed in next lecture. Thank you.